Hey, hey, everyone. It's your homegirl, Ramsey. What you see right now are a few cookie sets I've done in the past, and I chose these in particular to showcase because they each contain something within them that pertains to our topic for this particular video. Neutral, muted, earthy tones of icing. Just how on earth do you achieve those shades? Well, here in my video, part one of mixing difficult colors, I'm going to talk about how to tackle a few of these muted hues. But first, let's chat about some super specific colors I always have in my color cabinet. These colors in particular are ones that I have found work so well with an array of other common colors when mixed together to create such beautiful countless shades. So the following colors you see are staples in my color cabinet. Dusty Rose, Avocado, Forest Green, Eggplant, Wedgwood, and Warm Brown. Before we dive into mixing colors, a little tip. Always try to mix colors in a clear or white mixing bowl over a colored one. If you mix in a colored bowl, it can throw off the shade of your icing. First up, let's talk tans and taupes with the help of warm brown, avocado, and eggplant. When I want to mix a tan or taupey shade, I almost always start off with some warm brown. Warm brown does lend a nice base shade, but it has a little bit of a peachy pink tone to it that I want to cut. To do that, we're going to mix in one of my favorite, very versatile shades, avocado. As I mix, watch how that peachy color begins to fade out and lend more of a tan or khaki color. And mix, mix, mix. So we're almost there, but I'm not quite to the color of tan I want to be. You can add in more or less of avocado to deepen the shade of that tan you're looking for. Yeah, if you haven't guessed already, there's a lot of mixing in this video. You see the sides of the bowl here? You can kind of see the remnants of where we started with the warm brown to where we got with the avocado. Now, if you want a shade that's a little more brownish gray or more on the taupey side, that's where the eggplant comes in. Again, the more eggplant you add here, the deeper taupe you'll see. Check it out. And there you have it, one of my favorite neutral shades of taupe. Now we're gonna move into some sages and muted greens using avocado, wedgewood, and forest green. Here's my superstar friend, Avocado again, here to show you more of what it can do for you. Using various amounts of avocado alone will give you some beautiful colors all the way from pastel mint green to a deep, deep sage hue. Yep, I think I wanna go a little darker, so we're gonna throw in some more avocado.
If you want an even more muted or chalky shade of sage, you can bring in some Wedgwood. You may have to play with the amounts you use of each here until you find that perfect balance you want. Watch me work it into a few similar, but still different shades here doing just that. You can also pop in a little bit of forest green here if you want to create another beautiful shade in this family. And see, once again, you can see where we started and where we got to by adding a little bit of wedge wood and forest green to avocado. And last, here's a few shades of blushes and mauves using varied amounts of dusty rose and eggplant. So dusty rose is just that, dusty. I went a little heavy to start here, but when used less, it can give a pretty light blush color when using dusty rose. I always, always use Dusty Rose as my base when I'm needing a shade of mauve for a set. To achieve this, I start adding very small amounts of eggplant to Dusty Rose as you saw me just do here. As you can see, it starts transitioning to a light mauve. All you do is add more eggplant for a deeper shade of mauve if that's what you're going for. And that's what I'm going for. So here comes some more eggplant, baby. And there you go, friends. Here's the colors we mixed together today. I threw in a little bit of white, but you can see these shades go so well together. I see a little baby boho set with this combination. So a few last tidbits here. Number one, always add in color in small amounts and build up from there as you need. If you go too much too soon, it's a huge headache to fix. Number two, find shades and brands of color that you like by practicing, experimenting, and researching. You may have noticed that I've come to adore the AmeriColor brand, but there are so many different brands out there that are just as good. And three, comment below with any shades you find difficult to achieve, and hopefully I can work it in to part two of mixing difficult colors. As always, thank you so much, and if this was helpful, subscribe for more.